you join me in a quarry to answer the following question. Which is the best off-roader? Is it the all-new aluminium Land Rover Discovery? Is it the closest rival we have here, the Toyota Land Cruiser? Is it the small, light and cheap Dacia Duster? Is it an Isuzu D-Max? Well, probably not, but perhaps when it has some Arctic truck accessories. Is it the original, maybe the best, Jeep Wrangler? Or is it the Mercedes G-Class? We've set up a knockout competition in the form of three challenges to find out which is the best off-roader. And challenge one is a hill climb up two steep, scrabbly slopes to test the grip, traction and low-end grunt of each 4x4. First up, quite literally, is the challenger. The reason we're here, the all-new Land Rover Discovery. This being a Land Rover, a modern Land Rover, it's got all singing, all dancing. May not actually sing or dance. Uh, bells and whistles, so there's special programs off. That one is grass, gravel, snow. A little bit gravelly, but no, I, yeah, it's a little bit gravelly. Let's go and let's go and gravel. Uh, then there's a sort of uh, mud ruts, sand riverbed type thing, and then rock crawl. First hill, it should deal with absolutely no bother or whatsoever, and does a tiny bit of slip as we get to the top. And then there is the big hill. Let's put it in auto. Let's just put it in auto. Auto terrain response. First gear, steep hill. I'm going to want quite a lot of oomph. And it should go straight over the top. Bob's your mum's brother. This is quite steep. And that is the easiest hill I've ever been up to a steep hill in my life. I wonder if everything else will deal with it with quite the same ease and aplomb or not. The nearest rival to the Discovery in this test is the Toyota Land Cruiser, a car that I've got a lot of time for. Like the Discovery, it has different terrain settings, variable height suspension and fairly ordinary off-road tyres. Also like the Discovery, it mounted the two gravelly ascents as if they were not there. Right, so next to the Dacia Duster. It's four-wheel drive at least, but this is not the most off-roady of off-road vehicles we've got we've got here. There is no low ratio. I can lock four-wheel drive in and I've got traction control off because I think a little bit of slip might help. It's a manual, which is unusual in this company too, but at least it means I can give it plenty of revs because it's petrol. Right, I feel slightly apprehensive about this. Don't damage it, that's the key, don't damage it. If you think you're going to damage it, back out of it. It's going up, it's going up, it's going up. I'm going to need to check with a colleague. Does it look like it's about to ground out at the top? No, you're fine. In that case, I'll just attack it again. Right, let's just do it. You're fine, he says. Did that sound fine to you? That didn't sound fine to me. But it's up. It might be the last journey it ever makes. But it is up. Well, I know it's still running, but... And no fluids leaking out of it. Is that structural, do you think? Or is that just a cover on the suspension? There's a little, there's a little cover, and it's, and it's, it's clear that that little cover is, is there to protect it, and it's done its, it's done its job. It's just come loose at the back, but it has done what it is meant to do. The suspension is not about to fall off. Excellent. Right, so we'll try slope part two. It's only done it. It has only done it. Wow, that just leapt up there like a mountain goat. I really like these. So Land Rover are developing the new Defender as we speak, and they said, well, we don't really know what to make it. We've got a Wrangler in. We don't necessarily think it's the greatest car in the world, but we do like it. We like its honesty, and I really like its honesty. It's a cool thing. This is a petrol, which is cool as well. It's just so chunky and rugged and jeepy. Uh, so no adjustable ride height. Very simple. Two high, four high, four low. So we're in four low. Let's go. Took it easy near the top because I didn't want to whack a break over and it just breezes up. Piece of cake. Slope part two. Oh, it's, so easy for it. it's, it's, easy for, it's easy for everything, but it just feels that the Jeep was made for this sort of thing, which I suppose it was. The Gelandewagen. These things are cool, aren't they? Nearly 90, nearly 100 grand by the time they've got options on them these days. 
Uh, they don't sell many a year, but it gets to show you what you could still keep doing. What Land Rover could have maybe done with the Defender had they got on the case with it earlier, keeping it relevant. I mean, Mercedes don't sell a lot of these, but if you work out how many they sell, it's still around a billion and a half quid's worth of business a year, which is worth having, even for Mercedes-Benz. Slightly disappointingly, they're all getting up these slopes. I mean, the first one, I expected everything to get up, really. I quite like it if something else didn't get up the second one. Low range on. Differential lock in the middle, pre-selected. I don't think I need the. I don't think I need the front and rear ones on. I'll keep the middle one on. Well, let's see. It should do the first one. No, no drama. Indeed, it did the first one with no drama, and the second too, as did the Isuzu D Max, which has no fancy terrain response and a rather shonky plasticky interior. It does have a low-range gearbox though, and those massive balloon tyres, which scramble up the hill and get a decent bounce on over the rocky surface. Rather annoyingly, the first knockout stage didn't actually knock any of the 4x4s out. So, it is on to challenge two, the rock crawl, which is what it says on the tin, crawling over some rocks. It's a test of axle articulation, grip, traction and differential locking. This doesn't have diff locks per se, but it does have a rock crawl function, so it will do that sort of thing electronically. Uh, I will wind down the window because I have a tame off-road guide, sort of rock sherpa. Uh, and he's going to tell me where I can and cannot go. What lock, rock crawl does is it gives me a very long throttle pedal so that I should be able to just very gently ease the car from, from mound to mound. Straight. The idea is we don't damage anything. If we look like we're going to damage it, we call it off and it fails the test. That's the, that's the thing. The, that's the thinking. So this has got a very, very long throttle dead easy to modulate the speed I've got to say but these are these are big big very shiny wheels and I think we've nicked a nicked a bit on a curving an alloy basically but during a rock crawl right, there's a big rock that side and it'll and it'll hit the bottom of the body hit the bottom of the body game over I've got two gurus now two Sherpas why wouldn't you Feels like I've been here for quite a long time. I might just have to stay here until all everything erodes down through rainfall. I should think it would only take, say, I don't know, two to two to three million years. Check his back wheel. Yeah, I think yep. he's all right. Yep, all good. Yep. I think he's all right. We think he's all right. Not here from outside. And that's it. We are, we are officially across and out the other end. Not entirely without some concern in a couple of places, which is probably not surprising. That's quite a demanding course, but we'll see how the others do the same thing. This is the Land Cruiser over the rock crawl, terrain select, I mean, mogul. Moguls are surely the what's it with the axle articulation, so that's what I'm in. My guru does not think this has got as much ground clearance as the Discovery, but we will see. I've got my diffs locked, I'm in low, I'm in as high as I can get it. Could be a bit louder, could the old Sherpa? He could shout a bit louder at me. I might left foot, left foot break a bit, I think. Oh, he's good, the Sherpa, you know? He's good. Straighten up. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, straight. And the Land is, is doing well. Nice throttle response on this. Really nice, really nice and easy to modulate. Well, I think this guy is going to do it. He said it didn't seem like it had as much ground clearance as a Discovery, but it's... Oh, that didn't sound encouraging. And there's an erm and a stop. This is about where we had to stop in the discovery. I'm okay. But it is doing it with certainly no more drama than the Land Rover. Arguably a bit less. Would the Duster provide any more drama given its much lower ground clearance? I can actually, for the first time, I can see the rocks that I'm about to go onto. Couldn't see those in any of the other cars. This feels rather more real. Slightly that way. See, now, being a manual, this is hard. Oh, that smell of clutch already. If this gets over this, I will be stunned. Ah! So the handbrake just wouldn't quite hold it. I don't know if it's going to manage that, was what I've just heard. So what's next? What is... What is... I have a feeling this 
cause it quite a bit of an issue. Yeah, because that's going to get low as it comes yeah, down there, isn't exactly. it? exactly, and then it's just going to hit that. Okay, my on the balance of not breaking your car anymore, right. I might call it a day. Okay. Should we call it a day now? I think so. <laughs> unless, you want me to, unless you particularly want me to carry on. No, I'd like to. No, no. I I'd think like we'll, probably, we'll probably call it a day there so Nick can go home. It's pretty good. When you see the train it has gone over, then it wouldn't go over some of the bigger ones is no disgrace whatsoever. I've seen quite a lot of Jeeps do really well on rock crawl videos on the Tinterweb. Um, but there's no variable height suspension, and like I say, this is a long one, but we'll see how it, how it, how it goes. It's, it's, it feels pretty rigid, but I'm sure it's got loads of articulation. It feels like it should be doing this. It just feels like I ought to be doing this job in this car. We've got through three quarters yeah. of this. And look, I know this is on off-road tyres, proper off-road tyres, you know, serious mud, all-terrain stuff, but tyres have not been the issue in any of the other cars. Ground clearance has been the problem. There was one bit where the discovery slipped a bit, but that wasn't actually what was preventing it from going on. Yeah. Steering's very precise. Totally drama free. Slight bit of slip from the tyre. Nothing to worry about. That's awesome. And this is as much fun, I think this is as much fun as driving a supercar on a circuit. It's just great fun. It's just cool. You can't hand over responsibility to somebody else entirely with the rock crawl stuff, but what a giggle. Right, so let's take the Jeep Wagon on the rock crawl. Everything is going over the same course. I will have the rear and front diffs locked for this because there could be times when things are off the road. Right, my guide says, come on. Steering's slow, really slow. I think it's got like, still might have re recirculating ball steering. It's going very, it's going very easily, it's going very well. And even though this is on fairly ordinary tyres, no slip on the rocks. Okay, mate. There you go. That was easy for this car. But it's been around a long time. It's a tall car, it's a narrow car, it's got very short overhangs. That all plays to its advantage in these sort of conditions. It is a very good rock crawling car. I can't lock any of the diffs, so I'm at the mercy of the traction control system, which actually seems to have turned itself off when you go to four low, so we'll see. It might just be that these tyres give it no, no drama and it'll, it'll breeze over. And that's exactly what happens. The D-Max requires hardly any steering correction, and although rock crawling isn't really what the pickup was designed to do, the tyres are a rather large advantage, and it breezes over with some fairly impressive axle articulation for a commercial vehicle. Perfect. Right, so although five out of six have gone through the rock crawl, some have done it better than others. This and the Jeep, absolutely no drama at all. Then I would say the G-Wagon, then the Land Cruiser and the Land Rover, about the same. And unfortunately the Dacia didn't quite make it through. So although they've all done it, a sort of leaderboard is forming. For Challenge 3, we were going to try and simulate towing a horse box out of a muddy field by getting the duster stuck in some deep sludge because it had been knocked out during the rock crawl. Then we would drag it up a slippery slope. But the duster was just too capable to get stuck and the other five were all too good at towing it. So we reverted to what we know best, a stopwatch. We designed a course around the quarry which encompasses lumps, bumps, a proper water splash, some open plain and a reasonable amount of mud. Three, two, one, go. Okay, and we're starting in the D-Max. Now, the point is to go as fast as I can without ruining them. That's the short of it. So, too much grounding, too much bashing will be no good at all. The D-Max is straight to its stride. I'll tell you what though, it is not terribly com comfortable. Uh, the rock crawl out of the, oh, out of the swamp and we're off. So stiff, straight across the plateau and into. Actually, it rises the smaller stuff quite. Oh, crikey! I say that. It's going like a blinking, bucking bronco. Apparently, it's got Fox dampers on this Arctic Trucks edition, but it feels like they don't actually do anything at all. Oh, crikey! Pretty muddy section. A uh, bit of articulation down the hill. Oh, flipping egg! So uncomfortable. And. Across the line. That is quite, that is quite tiring. 
The D-Max is first up on the scoreboard then with a 1 minute 50 second run. Let's find out if that is any good. I'm in low ratio. Three, two, one, go. Oh, quick. Oh. Now, straight away, I'm aware that this is more likely to hit his nose because oh, just nearly did. But, so we've just got to be a little bit careful. The body's heaving a bit more, but it is far more comfortable. Down slope. Across the plateau. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go, 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 go. All right, rides across the plateau pretty well. There's a couple of bumps near the end. Gives his body under good control, actually. I'm quite impressed with that. Not really sure this is actually in a manual of off-roading. Fit a stopwatch, go as fast as you can. Certainly not where a land cruiser is. Right, right, right at the end, there are bits that are really tough and you have to just back off, otherwise you destroy it. But that's less hard work physically than the Isuzu. And let's find out how it is on the time. Two minutes seven. Two minutes seven. So, less hard work physically but also not as quick by <laughs> quite a long way actually 17 seconds you've got to be easy right from the off here because straight away oh crikey there's a dip oh, he'll descent's kicking in if I don't stop it through the water and I can't see a thing Right, up, up the other side, out. Come on, come on, let's go, come on, let's go. Next, across the plateau. Really does ride nicely across there. Reduce speed for hill descent control, it says. Yeah, probably better do that. Down to eight miles an hour. Oh, good, it's good. It feels like it's got really subtle wheel articulation. I don't know if it would be as fast as it, an Isuzu, but in terms of comfort, it's way above and also superior to the Land Cruiser as well. And we are across the line. Really enjoyable, actually, really enjoyable. At two minutes, one second, the Discovery is faster than the Land Cruiser, but slower than the Isuzu, which is not that surprising, given the Isuzu has the feeling that you could do anything to it. Now, I'm intrigued about this, it's quite tall, but it's very narrow and it's reasonably quick, but it is built to be an off-roader, so it should do okay, I think. Diff, low range, on it. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Deals with the first bump quite well. Don't forget this car has got short overhangs because it is, it has been around a while, but it does feel quite top heavy because it's narrow. It feels like it runs out of travel quicker than the Discovery and the ride is a bit firmer, which makes sense given it's a less modern car. But it's through the sort of twisty stuff, I think, where D-Class has its class and its nature on its side because it's quite narrow, very easy to place. I'd be surprised if this is as quick as the Discovery is. So I don't think it's a time to get through there. Off quickly and across the line. The G-Class though goes round in 1 minute 58 seconds, faster than all but the Isuzu, which maybe isn't that much of a surprise given it dealt with the rock crawl and hill climb better than the other two. Last but probably not least is the Jeep. So I can't put the suspension up, I can't change the diffs or anything, all I could do is put it in 4 low, which I have. Uh, that seems to turn off the stability control, which I, which I want to do. Ready, when you are. That is fast. No denying, this is the fastest car in a straight line. I want to get the window up before I hit the water. Oh, crikey, yeah, and it just breezes down there. Straight across the water. Right, how's it doing on the rocks? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And it is not the tyres, although it is on some proper good, rich, all-terrain tyres that are making the difference here. It's just, this feels like a proper, proper weapon. Oh, it just feels totally built for it. Which, of course, it is. That is a Jeep being a Jeep. 
no apologies <laughs> because that is something else right how fast is it <laughs> everything else will do it in two minutes that arctic truck to suzu one minute 50 a minute and a half for a jeep so that's one quarry three or three and a half challenges and six cars that are all brilliant in their own way but the jeep wrangler wins because well, it's designed to do this sort of thing for a living so if you want the best off-roader buy the original off-roader